Yeah, I initially I, th I thought Alliance's draft was shaping up to be pretty pretty solid. I do think they're going to suffer a little bit with in these team fight engagements. I just don't think they have the answers for the Enigma, which last game, like I said, they, it was a lot easier for them to deal with. But now the Silencer, I think the Silencer is going to be key here. If they get a couple like really good global silences to bait in the Alliance lineup, it could really we could really see this game like blow wide open for for Virtuous Pro. Yeah, I, I am gonna keep my uh, really my camera trade uh, on this mid lane. I am I'm really excited to see the Meepo versus Storm Spirit matchup. A uh, quick for Storm Spirit, I feel it's a you know it's another one of his iconic heroes. Really, him on that uh, low trade and him on that Storm, Spirit, who I really think about. You know, even if he does have a bit of a rough time in lane, obviously can recover in the jungle, but. Mm -hmm. I feel a lot of this game, the, the pressure has to be on for no one, as it always is in a Meepo lineup. Yeah. So, I think Ramsey's lane this time, it's a very similar matchup to we saw last game, right? This Juggernaut versus Sand King, and we saw what Mickey was able to do on the Juggernaut. So, really excited to see how Ramsey's does this game with it in his hands. And I think bottom lane, Pasha... Wait, this is... Yeah, so Pasha on Mars. I imagine they're going to put... Oh, we'll see. We'll see what Alliance says. But in top lane, they're just going on Jug. He has Blade Fury. He should be fine. I think they're going to force him to spend the mana, though. Yeah. No, but very restrained there by Ram. Back to stage. Uh, one thing I have to say is, uh, do you think they're going to be uh, try laning this Juggernaut? Because they can do that. Because they'll have the one-on-one -on -one matchup again. Because Enigma's going to be in the jungle. They and the thing is, about that, like, either Boxy or Troll Warlord do fine in that game, but for Batrider, it's a pretty... Like, I'm not sure which one they're going to put down there. Right now, these lanes are just all over the place. No hero is really trying to commit. Yeah, it's, uh, you can see the swaps coming. They really want that jog against the Batrider matchup, and they're, they're, they're preempting the by Alliance, and it looks like VP might have... <laughs> Definitely won the lanes, and especially they this ward it has scouted out the fact that Bok. All right. Oh, but R Ramsey's he used his TP to the top lane, and he so does Mickey. So they could just TP switch. Yeah. And this means Alliance they know they're not off against the Juggernaut there. Oh, yeah, this Ramsey. is really good for Alliance because Batrider yeah. should be able to run over Mars pretty easily or fly over, I guess in this case. <laughs> <laughs> but. uh Mid lane, this Meepo versus Storm Spirit. Not a lane that I, I can say I've seen very often, but uh, I imagine Quakebug gonna be pretty happy in the first few levels, but once no one gets those two or three, the second Meepo, it should be pretty good for him. Yeah, it's, uh, so we really saw that early harass on Ramsey's payoff because, you know, he was forced to go back to base and have this TP to top lane that allowed Alliance to just TP and set up the lanes they want. And you know, this might give Alliance another early laning stage victory. That they might have a chance to snowball once again. Alright, so we're just going to see Roger jungling. Pretty much what you'd expect from the uh, Enigma. Bottom lane, good pull from Insania trying to pull the Equilibrium back. Boxy, once he has the points in both Firefly and um, Sticky Napalm can really push Mars out of lane. And so Mars isn't even contesting at this point. He's just blocking the blocking the pole camp. Yeah, one of the really nice things about having a Crystal Maven is never feel bad about spamming that. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, very often you do see these Batriders run out of mana. They're not able to get these early kills. Storm doing really well in the mid lane. 14 and 1, followed very closely by no one, though. Big has been left alone to his own devices because the Tiger's here in the mid lane. Quake, but he does have the first point over in the pull. They've rotated in Insania, and I think this might be first blood over to Quake first. That's huge. That's so huge for the side of Alliance. Great rotations. And this is really all comes down to how they set up these lanes, right? They are in a position right now where they can afford to make these rotations. You don't have to worry about bot lanes pretty much ever. This is secured for Alliance. And then top lane, Mickey feels pretty safe. They don't have the ability really to get on top of them thanks to the Whirling Axes. So just overall, really good uh, play here so far from Alliance. Yeah, and now they're just moving all three heroes to this top lane and 
that this is what we discussed, you know, when you have the Enigma in the jungle, that you are going to get pressured in your Like, that's exactly how Alliance. Oh, they're getting ready to swap lanes again. Ramsey's TP's bottom and Pasha TP's top. And Boxy runs straight to the side, chopped yeah. by a TP. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, this is, of course, what's going to happen. This is, uh, you know, you haven't got anything out of these TP because Alliance are able to match you step for step. You don't have a hero, you know, like a Chen that is going to give you that advantage. Alliance, they are just so happy with what's been going on. I mean, Boxy wants to be in the top lane, to be honest. This is a, an area of the map that Batrider would much rather be in. But he's actually taking a lot of damage here. He got Speared under tower. Yeah, one thing I do have to say is Solo is a, a pretty good support Batrider. Uh, mm -hmm. With this Arcane Curse, bam, that's Bob. Mickey? Uh, he's going to he's gonna be fine. Dyer's middle tower is All right, lane's starting to stabilize a little bit here for Virtuous Pro. Yeah, Insania, I think he might be in a lot of trouble. Roger rotated in, but the slow over from Insania. Now, Mickey, he's chasing. They do have the healing ward. Only level there one. To be some sort okay, of not quite able to get that 75 gold. Nice, nice micro there by Ramses. I'd like to see Boxy just kind of begin lane cutting here pretty soon. Like, he doesn't. Uh, I guess you don't really need to. Oh, he gets spear top. He's in a lot of trouble. Nice spear. Thank you by the Arcane Curse. A few more hits and they are able to get that kill. Solo. They saw. First plus two of the game. Yeah. They saw Taiga, like, back off on the Sand King and. I mean, Boxy's just sitting too low health, like too low of health to, to really contest that bottom lane. Single engagement. Mike now in a lot of trouble. Yeah, with that Malefist, the spin needs one more right click now. Ramsey's and he is going to get it. BP getting these turnaround kills. Even though Alliance have the lanes they want, uh, it looks like uh, BP have been able to successfully pull the advantage. Yeah, that was really nice. I think there's just a couple misplays by Alliance, right? Like, they, they don't necessarily have weaker lanes, but just not being in the correct positions. Yeah, and I think Quakefer might be in trouble mid. Olo's rotated. Maybe just to set up a ward. It's going to be just fine. If, if Boxy knew that this Mars was alone, he might be able to get... It's hard for Batrider to kill the Mars, right? Because he just... If he hits the spear... You just can't get back on top of him in time. But he does have a point available. I imagine he's going to go for the third point in Firefly, but we'll see. He could obviously go for the Flame Break as well. Ding, 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 mother yeah, it's, uh, it's... So uh, it's, we haven't talked about this mid lane. Uh, Quake, but he would be a little bit behind in CS. Obviously, the Meepo has been in the jungle. Oh. He got speared, so it is on cooldown. He should be able to just walk on out of here. Oh, maybe. The no mana for the spear, so he is going to be able to live through that just. And now Solo actually chasing, not realizing about this salve. He will cancel the salve, but folks. You can. Solo's getting He's, very. He can turn on him. Yeah. Turn. He will go down here. So he, he'll probably die on the Batrider to the Arcane Curse since he did have to cast several spells. Is he? Yeah, he'll go down. But at least he doesn't give over a minus two because the silence is <laughs> already dead. You know, you have to look on there the There you go. Side. Yeah. Oh, yeah, They're playing on. a lot of... Oh, go ahead. Uh, well, I was just going to say, we're sneaking past the buff. No, even though he had this unfavorable lane map, he's been very, like very good at hitting record. these spears, and it's allowed them to set up these kills. Mm -hmm. I was say, they've been playing a lot of pressure in the mid lane, too. Meepo, he's one of those heroes who just clears a wave and then disappears in the jungle, clears a wave. Actually, bot lane, Roger, in a lot of trouble. There is the first kill. Boxy rotates in, and he has lasso. It would appear I, I think... That might be enough to be able to save off Mickey. Now Ramsey's in real trouble, slowed up by the one axes. That rider first uses the lasso, great rotation, hits his nice kill behind of the lines. They really needed that because Mickey was struggling in this lane against the Juggernaut, and now they're feeling pretty good. That'll take the wind from their sails. Dyer's bottom tower. Yeah, and Tiger is more than happy to take the experience as the farm here in this. Oh yeah, Sand King. Yeah, anytime you give Sand King, like, soul farm and levels, he's going to thrive. He loves it. Ooh, TP in from Koikva, but he TP's in right under a ward. So they know this is happening, and no one responds immediately. He's here waiting, trying to bait this out. Tiger 
has the stun. Are they going to commit for Pasha? She does miss the spear. Well, it act more of a dodge by Quaper. And it looks like there's going to be no kills here in this top lane. Nice rotation there by no one. Giving the life. Mm. He was close. They almost got it. Sand King, obviously. Bro Strike. Pretty good. Boxy, by the way, isn't going for those early boots of travels. Is putting the drop. How, how, do, how do you feel about this? Uh... I think that's fine. If you don't really go that super greed build where you can just get like a really early like bottle boots of travel, then drums is, is easily the best build you can go on this hero. You usually go drums anyway, and it's just a great item to not only help your team, but yourself. It, it, it pretty much broken record. makes every part of his kit better. Uh, do you think he felt the need to go for this because he had those two deaths? Maybe. I feel like he was probably going to go this anyway. To be honest, I don't think he was going to be playing super greedy to go for the boots of travel mid lane. This tower is super low. They're going to be able to get the deny. Dyer's middle tower. They're pinging out Koikva. They know he's here somewhere. A moment too soon. Oh, he's just been able to dance to like, help with these two. That's, That's a lasso. Juggernaut's just dead. And he had this bit. Koikva oh, so did rush in. I, I really thought Koikva was going to commit onto that Juggernaut. But it looks like they're going to look for Roger. He tried to get the black hole out in time. They need a little bit more damage. Quake for now. High ground miss. Arcane for us. Where's the body? In comes Troll Warlord though. He does have Battle Trance. Not Omni Sash as well as the Black Hole. There's not that much damage. The Spear's pushing Sane actually back. Foxy, he's not. Doesn't have the Firefly for any longer. But they have managed to take that Roger. No one. He's here to clean up over on the Meepo. They hold down the Troll Warlord. Those axes aren't going to save him much longer. What a weird engagement. Like, a... yeah, I... I don't understand why Quakefoot didn't go on the jug when they had him in the lasso. Yeah, it really looked like they were just going to pick off the jug and that was going to be the end of it. And then they try to make their play on the Enigma and then troll wraps all the way around. <laughs> like it was just, it was just a really disjointed fight where like both teams weren't really sure how they wanted to take the fight. But I think overall it ends up going Virtus Pro's favor. They get the kill on the troll warlord. Yeah, it's all, all the meanwhile, you know, Tiger was here in the top lane. He, he is doing fairly okay for himself. It looks like he's rushing the blink tag and he's, you know, almost halfway towards it. It, it wasn't that uh, catastrophic of an engagement, but obviously you do not want to be losing Mick on in the game. <laughs> Radius structures are not only fortified, they are... I mean, take a look at net worth. Kind of what we'd expect, right? Meepo, as you said early on, usually just going to be the most farmed here on the map at all times. But this game's pretty even. Less than a thousand gold advantage for Virtuous Pro. And to be honest, based on how the lanes should have gone, I would have put Alliance at a pretty decent advantage right now. But Virtuous Pro found a couple of really good kills, stabilized those lanes. Now they're sitting pretty. Yeah, no one, by the way, uh, he's brought, getting that early blink tag on the Meepo. Occasionally, you use go for the uh, Ethereal Blade as the first item. Looks like they just want really set up and either shut down the, the storm you know some of these other heroes for the side of alliance they want to get active a bit more early it seems yeah i love the fact that taiga's played the same role essentially this game as he did uh, his last game on rubik he just sits in the lane opposite of his of his team and just keeps the lane push finds farm and it's gonna allow him to get a fairly early blink dagger not obviously as early as last game and he's not gonna be as far as he was on rubik but for the four position sand king, I don't think he'd be that upset. He should have it probably around 16, 17 minutes. Probably earlier. Uh, Roger, he's uh, gonna have his mechanism pretty for the full god you grieve. Uh, do you think there's any reason? Last game, you know, he got that blink and every tower is before the shiny new boot. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if there's like something in particular he wants to purge. The, I mean, the obvious, the only like real big purge for me would be like Frostbite or Sticky Napalm. Everything else pretty much is, you know, a targetable CC. It does provide the, the, the Greaves aura though, which is really strong. So maybe that's their plan is to just kind of five man around the Guardian Greaves. Yeah, it's, uh, I can see how they'd be so strong with their lineup, you know, eating more with the Guardian Greaves. No, you'll have trouble taking down anyone. Alliance, they don't really quite have that burst. I got bottom. What a burrow strike. Barely gets out. That was yeah. the blitz reveal from no one. And it looks like they're trying to go out to Pasha. The global silence. I think this is probably going to cost them their life there. Crystal Maiden Ramsey's definitely going to run down in Xenia. 
Botsy will be able to escape with the Firefly, but nice counter initiation. Yeah, that was a, that was a good play. Global definitely keeps his team alive, which is nice. I think they probably find the kill onto the Mars if they don't Global there. So you do at least have global cooldown, or you have global silence on cooldown for the side of VP, which gives Alliance a little bit of time to work. And Vicky's building an interesting item here that I haven't seen very often on Trolls. He's going for the, the Maelstrom first. This just to... Yes. Radiant top tower is under attack. It's decent against heroes like Mars too, because magic damage is not really mitigated by him. So items like Diffusal and Maelstrom allow him to put out a little bit more damage. And it's also better than going like Battle Fury this game, I think, for that reason. Which would be like your farming item. Bottom lane, they're going right on Boxy. He's caught out, but he's just flying off. Uh, you skewered Strange him to a tree, say, but he Radiant will be able to escape with the help of that Firefly. And now, Pops is dropped, he's going in, Roger. But the obvious has run out of the Boxy. I don't think he's going to be able to put it down quite quick. He's got it into this. Roger, Boxy, very low. He will eventually fall to that spin. Yes, he will. And now, the Meepo team. Look at no one. Quake for spear to a tree. You're not getting away from this one. Hi, guys. They, they do have vision for you with the help of Solo. But that's going to be three kills. Fire strike away to safety. But Pasha's right on top of you. Oh my gosh, no one is... Yep, this is what we talked about. Meepo, really good at, at dealing with Storm Spear, right? This, this like blink net that he has available. The spear from Mars did connect on Storm Spirit there, so that was obviously what set up that kill in the first place. But it looked like a great initiation on Alliance taking down uh, the Enigma right away. But Virtus Pro, they have a lot to work with when it comes to these fights. I, I do have to wonder if that was a you know, a tiny bit greedy. Cause the Boxy had obviously seen bunch of people behind the enigma must have expected some sort of retaliation mm -hmm. that's gonna be three runs for virtuous pro i mean that fight only does give them that gold advantage but also the map advantage as well allowing them to secure a three uh basically three bounty runes there for themselves taiga has a blink dagger now just buys it so something they didn't have in the last fight pasha by the way is gonna have a blink of money for it still hasn't bought it Perhaps trying to make his way to a side jump and is saying this if is in invisibility is not invincibility. Is he gonna be able to but he successfully walked out of the range of the sentry but the drugs now instead they're gonna find the sand cake of the tiger. Yeah, I mean that's a much better kill for them. I figured, you know, Pasha just gonna drop the arena there, make sure he can't escape. They saw him use the bro strike, obviously try and buy his crystal maiden some time. And that's just a free kill. I mean this is Virtuous Pro looking really good this game. No one's Meepo, obviously exceptional play. They're smoked up here on the high ground, looking to find this Batrider. Yeah, one thing we haven't really seen, can't say, maybe. A Boxy, they do miss the first net, but the second net as well as the spear to the tree. They pop the global net, and now DK is going to have to walk away. They buy that instantly on Boxy. Looks like they're trying to turn this around. Solo definitely is a kid in their purview, but the lost Storm Spirit. He got a DD rune. Wait for he in trouble? It looks like he's going for Roger. They do have black holes, so they need to be a bit careful about how much they Pasha blinks forward, misses the spin. And now he might be in trouble himself for Roger Butte to push them back. But they're on top of him. That's next. The lasso, as well as the CM ultimate, the glue. The black hole, it does stop the ultimate of the CM, but they're just inside with the epicenter. And now onto Pasha, they do have the stun. But nice spear to get rid of Tiger. Blinking away, Pasha. He is going to be able to get away to safety. They do have vision of the last tick. But I think that was a, a one for one, but there was a buyback. <laughs> yeah, the, it, is a, it is a one for one, but like you pointed out, actually, uh, Silencer died too. So it was a two for one. Oh, uh, wait, Storm Spirit's caught. Real trouble. And he does have a little bit to zip away. Tiger's here. Are they going to be able to turn this around? Do they have enough damage to take down this Meepo? The Ethereal Blade, but it just actually amplifies the damage with Crystal Nova. That's a great, great response from Alliance. It was a really good find originally from no one because he can definitely solo the Storm Spirit, but his team not willing to let that happen. Rotate over, they find a kill on the on the highest net worth here on the map. And Quakefuck immediately queues up the Yule Scepter. <laughs> He's done with it. He doesn't want to deal with it. I can't remember who I heard talking about it at the, at the panel of the Miner, but what they said is every time on a Meepo, uh, when you die, it feels like you die twice. Because, you know, you lose hand over so much kill, uh, so much money to the enemy side and can't farm for the period that you're dead. So it's such a massive setback every time you die with that hero. You can see because of that, Alliance have the net worth advantage. He also hands over a ton of experience. That's one of the things that a lot of people 
like forget about. Meepo is usually multiple levels above every other hero in the game, right? So when he dies, you definitely forfeit over a good a good chunk of experience to the other team. Ramsey is getting caught here, gets stunned yep. up. They saw him use the spin, no blade so here. He doesn't have it. He should be fine. Yeah, he'll be fine. His whole team's behind him. I like, it's just gonna be a way to safety. And, you know, Mickey, he he was involved in that uh, little skirmish in the middle. Led to this bottom point, but uh, all the meanwhile, he's just been farming and for a troll warlord to be ahead of a Meepo, I think that's really impressive when you do Battle Fury. Mm -hmm. All right, looks like VP gonna try and put some pressure here at the tier one tower top. This is a difficult engagement for them, right? Because this is pretty easy to defend if you're Alliance. But you do have global, you have black or black hole coming off cooldown in about a minute. But I really like where Tyga's positioned himself. Yeah, they're ha, not gonna, have, they're just gonna go farm. Ha, have you seen where these wards side of the really nice That's interesting. Yeah, I really do like that. That's an interesting ward. I don't really see that one very often. It's difficult to de-ward, which is nice. Yeah, you just don't really expect them to have it. They, they scanned Roche, and they happened to see Silencer walking by with the scan, so I think they just assumed Meepo was doing it. So he just storm, he just goes ahead and ball lightnings right through it, just to be sure. So, uh, close to that, uh, 100 gold away from that. Gonna amplify the damage that he's in the combo. Mm hmm. Taiga, you gotta be careful here. There's the whole squad of Virtuous Pro who really wants this rune, and he oh, just he gets skewered all the way out. They have sentries all the way down, but now Boxies, it looks like they want to initiate the arena. It has managed to catch Taiga as well as the Omni Slash on top of it. Looks like it's gonna be two quick kills, and meanwhile, in the mid lane, no one just picked you off Insania, so three kills around the map by the VP, and they will transition this. Oh yeah, this is a good Roche time for them now. There's no way you can respond to it if you're Alliance. This is what VP wants, right? Their whole plan is to play around their big cooldowns, the global silence, and uh, use their level advantage, really. No one on the Alliance really feels safe fighting into that lineup. I don't need to alliance, but yes, and, and Meepo, with the AGS, obviously, he can just play that tiny bit more aggressive. This will also give him the money for the Ethereal Blade if he didn't have it already. It looks like yeah. he did have it. No, he just finished it. Yeah, he just finished the E-Blade. He only had the Ghost Scepter previously, but E-Blade complete now, which obviously gives him a lot more kill potential, uh, as well as potential to save uh, any specific Meepo of his choice, which is, is really nice. Uh, Ramses, by the way, is, is keeping up uh, pretty well for a Warlord. Uh, Mickey, he is going to have a BKB pretty soon. Is that enough for the side of Alliance to look to fight once you have a BKB here on the... I don't think so, because you still have to deal with Black Hole, and like I said, there's not really a good way to deal with it. The thing with that Black King Bar is going to offer him is the ability to like kind of pick off specific heroes and, and kind of ignore the Meepo in these fights. But he's just not going to get kited as much. That's about it. And an unsuccessful smoke there for Alliance. I think they were yeah, hopefully they, look not in a good way. found in the mid lane. They saw Roger, actually, for a moment. They pinged him out, but Batrider just not close enough, and he doesn't have Blink, so there's no real way for them to get on top, get that lasso, and find a kill. You pretty much have to rely on Taiga to get that Blink Burrow Strike. And is he itemizing for a Blink soon? Yeah, Boxy's pretty close, so you should have it soon. Bottom lane, Koikpa is... <laughs> he's just hanging out in the trees, hoping that no one finds him. He, he has a TP. I think he's just looking... Yeah, exactly. It's a little sketchy to do against heroes like Meepo because, you know, you may see three, four heroes on the map, but the Crowleys just be like a random Meepo. Yeah, nice, they, they fort the wave. That's nice. That's a really good play. Just, uh, they know exactly what to do, and they're just not letting you get away with it. Transitioning this Aegis into a tier 2 tower. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they look for even more than tier 2. Yeah, they want to go high ground. They have all their spells available. They have Aegis on the Meepo. Like, they, they're they definitely wanting to find a big fight and then take an objective off of it. I don't think they go high ground just, you know, 5v5. That's not like their plan, but 
They might actually find some kills here in the top lane. But no one, he's keeping in. I think they have to back out. A lot of people coming through. AK has the Cole BKB BKBs. And he will be okay. What? No, he sees Roger. So he knows they have the black hole to cancel that TP. And Mikkei, this is his first BKB. He's trying to walk away. And he will actually be able to walk out, I think. <laughs> Just juking and jiving and trying to get out of there. Yeah, he's quick, but I mean, that's your 10 second BKB, the first one of the game, and it's. Is he still in trouble? No one is just running Tiger, down. Fire strike. But they do manage to kill him. Mickey just threw him to the sides of the arena. Now Tiger's not going to be able to get away. And there's no buyback on this Troll Warlord. And this is now, like I said, this is what they wanted to do. They take a couple heroes. They're going to turn it into a high ground push for sure. They still have Aegis available. Black Hole not expended. This is looking really good for VP. Yeah, Apasha just a great catch there with the arena. They, they literally pursued BK across the entire length of the map. <laughs> All the way to the tier 2 mid. That's pretty nuts. Great burrow. And he, are they going to be able to kill off? They kill off the jug. He does not have the Aegis. No one's going to go down, but it's a black hole. It's also three of them. Marsha just going back. They do lose the sand kick, and now they have to back off. They've lost three, the second life of the Meepo. And Oh, I, I think you might be in trouble if you're the insane SCM. Eventually, they will get off of it, but on the back line, Quaver not quite able to kill off Solo with that zip zap. No one's just going to leave. They're going to back out. So th this is kind of respecting the Troll Warlord. He does have BKB available. Quaver, what are you... He's out of mana, but he is going to be okay. And BK, he's respawned. Are they able to find anyone? They've got Solo. They've got Pasha. Solo, I think Solo should be able to get away to safety, but they have found... Asha, so Mikke respawning, and they only lose the tier 3, so not awful for the side of Alliance, which yeah. is looking like a full lane of racks. Yeah, they just, res I mean, Virtus Pro, rightfully so, respecting the, the respawn of the Troll Warlord and his BKB, not wanting to kind of throw on the high ground right now. They know they have the lead, and they do manage to find two good kills, which is nice. Yes. So one thing I do have to really praise for the side of Alliance is, you know, they correctly identify that, you know, we kill this Meepo once and he respawns, but if we can burst the Juggernaut, there's no way he's coming back into the thing. That's what they look to do, and that's, I think, what really helped repel the push. Koikva was so close to dying. Mars barely missed the spear on that engagement bottom. He got hit by Malefice, and the mini stun, I think, confused Mars, and so he throws the spear where he thought the storm was going to be. And it just goes whiffing right by. It, had he connects that spear, I think obviously Koikva would go down there, but lucky break there for Alliance. Uh, have you seen this warding side of VP? And they have <laughs> the diamond in the mid lane. I mean, these are great wards. You can pretty much watch Alliance's movement all around their base, and that's what they want to be doing. They really want to be playing aggressive right now. They and still smoked have, up. Uh, they have global off cooldown, so I. Action. This ward is just paying so much dividends, they know exactly where everyone is. Okay, as BKB gets skewered. Do they have the first? And the last one on the back line, the BKB, the global sun. It doesn't really matter, and because of the silence after the BKB, he wasn't able to pop his ultimate. And now they've lost two, and they're just gonna back out. Quick was in, but there's a buyback on Troll. Is this too far? Yules is himself to the skewer to spear. The but they have the fire strike. Any sense of will they be able to kill anyone? Tiger, he does go down. They've lost Quake, but they haven't lost anyone yet from the side of VP. Mickey, he brought back, but he really needs some sort of kill. The Ethereum Blade, they do eventually lose him. And now onto Ramses, they pop the ultimate on Mickey. They need a vision and they are able to get that kill. Now Roger doesn't have a Blink Tag or anything. They, they don't have vision onto this high ground, high ground, but the Malefist is going to slow him down. Roger does have a TP in one second. But the but flame break, they do have a vision and they break the TP with a problem. What an engagement by Alliance. They try to disengage on the side of VP and just a beautiful four-man burrow epicenter into CM uh, freezing field like that. There's so much magic damage coming out from the side of Alliance. And I mean, we can just look at the fight recap there. The amount of damage CM does 6,200, then 5,400 from the Sand King. Absolutely beautiful fight from them. Uh, uh, one point of worry that I am looking at though is the full side of Alliance, they only have the buyback on the on the Storms. Solo, top lane. Map. Getting caught by Boxy. In comes Pasha though. Goes to back into the tree. Solo is still sitting in the fire, but Boxy able to fly away to safety. Uh, does have a TP for another 10 seconds, and I think he might be in trouble now. Yeah. Solo just gonna stand here and wait for the plus two. That's all he wants. Wait, is he actually gonna get this off? No, okay. No, they have the spin as a contribute. 
I was confused. I was like, I'm, I, I thought for sure Solo would at least throw an auto attack or something to prevent him from blinking, but that was close. But you know, as you say, he does eventually get that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's just standing there. He's like, I know what I want. But yeah, it's, it's Alliance, you know, it, it does feel to me like Meepo, you know, he is a very uh, early to mid game hero. That's where he is strongest. And as Alliance, maybe they're starting to weather the storm. You know, I'm looking at the net worth. It's only a key advantage for the side of EP and they still haven't, you know, taken their first lane of rack. Yeah, I mean, it looked like Virtus Pro. They had the, you know, a couple Radiant opportunities here to do that. And Alliance's draft at this point, it's the amount of damage that they have. Dealing with Meepo isn't going to be that difficult, right? If Storm picks up a BKB to match like Mickey, they can pretty much run train on, on the, Virtu the side of Virtus Pro. And not in a good way. Yeah, so they are looking towards this last tier 2 tower. Ramses is going to be able to claim it by himself. But uh, the one thing I'd really have to praise VP is I'm, you know, I'm looking at the map and it just looks so dark for the side of the line. Yeah, they, uh, they're they pretty much restricted to their base as far as the top half of the map. I love Koikva cutting mid lane right now. This is what he needs to be doing, making sure that they don't have the ability to go high ground. Yeah, it's Roshan. Third does have money for his blood zone, but I think... He is holding on to buyback, being the only member of Alliance with it. Storm Spirit, obviously one of the best heroes with Sorry, I just noticed that Dyer's Yeah, you kind of have to have buyback if you're Alliance at this point, at least on some of your heroes, just because, like, one bad fight in Virtuous Pro, like, Meepo takes bases so fast. Probably, probably one of the fastest base takers in the game. So you can't really, like, afford to lose a fight right outside your base and then have no way to really defend. Yeah, no one has complete the full eye of Scotty, so we put that little bit more tanky, but we have an initiation in the mid lane. But see, he's managed to find Solo Sansa. Are they going to him? Kill him before he gets ready, but the Crimson got it. He's doing a lot of work, and Solo, he's going to live through that. They find him in the... Oh my gosh, all right. Storm Spirit, is he going to get caught here? Global Silence puts him under, and they get the kill. Wow, great prediction from no one. He actually just like blinks right into the Roche Pit and throws a blind net and catches catches Quickfoot Storm. I caught the end of the kill, but I didn't catch the net, but because I expected everyone to get out safely, but Alliance just punished there for their aggression. This Crimson Guard, it's just nullifying so much of their damage. That's a pretty good item, yeah. I mean, Virtus Pro's lineup is very scary as far as their five man and perfect time for Rose to respawn. Meepo gonna be able to pick up his Aegis again. Maybe they gave it to Juggernaut this time, but I imagine it goes to Meepo. Yeah, she's on, on Jug instead. Mid lane, Alliance is smoked up. They want to take a fight, but this is... It's not going to be the easiest fight anymore. You now have two Meepos to deal with, two Juggernauts. Global Silence is down, but you still have the threat of Black Hole available. Yeah, to add, and they see Pasha. Pasha breaks the smoke, and you know, he is not the one you want to be going on. Oh, it's just a bit too tanky. I, I guess they were probably hoping for someone like Solo or Roger, but you're not going to find them. Yeah, I love, I love Pasha's build this game. They're just chasing around the map, trying to find kills here while Alliance wants to just cut waves constantly. Mickey running. He actually might get scouted here. No, no one chooses to go the other way. So Mickey just trying to farm where he can and cut waves, but he's got to be careful. Just going to TP home. That they're trying to get their lanes under control, but quick for Mickey. It's exactly as you say. Great job of. That's kind of why Boxy's in the trees. He's initiated over on Pasha. Is there any follow up? They have the Veil, the Virus Strike. But now, affected by the Crimson Guard, I, I don't think you're able to get this kill. I mean, that's the second time Lasso has been used here. Um, and they don't really get anything for it, right? Mid lane. It ends up baiting their storm into a death. But this time, they go on this Mars and they just don't have the damage to deal with them. Storm Spirit finds himself a regen rune, though. He does have that fresh Bloodstone, but hasn't really come. He hasn't really been able to do anything with it, right? It, it's... Yeah, it's, he, he just picked up now and... You know, I think it's first real usage is going to be this eventual high ground defense. Is coming as the second Aegis. Mm -hmm. Mickey finished a Mjolnir, has Mansa BKB. I mean, he, he puts out a ton of damage if he can get on top of these targets. The problem is... Does have this like massive onslaught of Virtus Pro. So we'll see what he can do. Boxy, they know he doesn't have Flaming Lasso. 
but no one goes in the spear as well as the global science. So it looks like Boxy might be taken down, but no one is he gonna lose his first life? This Meepo is very low. They use the Ethereum Blade to try and save it up. The black hole is only on to actually it's on to two. They find the same as well. The virus right there. He's over here. They pop the trouble on top, and they've got two the Omni Sun. They're going to lose the mask while the Omni Sun get into a lot of work. Oh my gosh. But they've only lost Tiger and Sania with his own BKB. He's gonna live through this. BK, he's surviving. Rams, he's he already used the cheese of his own. Will they be able to take him down? Very good. Why? And no one! He burned the Aegis thing, killed all five of them. What an amazing high ground fight for the side of Alliance. This is insane. Every time this fight happens, we see just a beautiful blink Burrow Epi. He gets the entire lineup of Virgo's Pro inside the arena. And then Mickey just pops BKB Battle Trance and just runs through the entire lineup of VP. Like he just did so, like 14,000 damage in that fight almost. That, that, that was just amazing. And no, it's worth pointing out that Alliance had no slouches in taking buildings themselves. Only the buyback from the Sand King was needed, and now you really have to worry for VP because Alliance have, that they can take and win these fights. Yeah, if they don't kill the Troll Warlord in that black hole, you pretty much can't fight him, right? Like, that is their hard control through his BKB. You can't kill him through tra Battle Trance, Juggernaut's Omni Slash, pretty much a moot point, and he just... It was insane. Like, every hero he just walked at was just dead within seconds. Yeah, Jug managed to survive for a little while because he got off the cheese into his dash, but right off that, you know, they were just able to take him down. And, you know, Must we just talked about Quake with Bloodstone looking at the 14 charges. He's <laughs> one Yeah, he's feeling pretty happy about that. And he's going for the Shivas next, which I really like. It's fantastic against Meepo. It's great against Juggernaut. It just gives him survivability, gives him vision, regen, like it overall one of the better items on Storm Spirit. And it's just more magic AoE damage for these fights that they have, right? Between Insania, who now has a blink BKB, and obviously Taiga's Sand King, like there's so much AoE magic damage coming out in these fights. I have to say, after that engagement, you know, once again, Alliance, if you look at the net worth graph, there was one tip around 20 minutes where they <laughs> had an advantage. But now, uh, once again, it looks like they're, they're tipping into it. Yeah, they, I mean, they're now recouped from an almost 10,000 gold deficit. And Meepo is a hero at this point in the game against these specific heroes is going to struggle. Like, he's not going to be this, like, huge dominant force that he's been all game. And I have to say, when this Storm Spirit hits level 25, that's uh, that's just such a massive increase in magic damage for the side of Alliance. And mm -hmm. I, I don't know if no one's going to be able to live through that. Yeah, I really like it. The Sand King going for a Lotus Orb, it looks like. What is Boxy doing? Going for an E-Blade. That is interesting to me. He has the Ghost Scepter. I like the pickup of the Ghost Scepter. Okay, swing and a miss on the bot lane creep wave there from Quakeva, but it's yeah. fine. He'll get the next one. Yeah, he's like, I can just do this again. I've been wondering All right. Virtus Pro paying a little bit more cautious now. Yeah, I mean, after those... You no, know, all these fights, uh, I think you really have to do... Tiger, as, as you said time and time again, I've done such an amazing job with the these big bar epis. And, you know, we're probably not even noticing that he's getting this failed... Uh, you know, debuff onto everyone that's just helping his crystal maid and helping his store. Absolutely. Pop out the damage. And it's, that's when I mean, we talked about why Mjolnir was good this game, right? You have so much magic damage added to the fights just from a Mjolnir. And with the attack speed that Troll Warlord has, as soon as he activates that battle trance, he's going to be getting a ton of procs. Yeah, Troll Warlord as well by himself has the battle trance strong dispel as well as very close to his Reba. Does this mean can hit Battle Trance inside Black Hole. I actually don't know about that. That's like a weird mechanic. I imagine... My my like gut intuition is saying yes, you should be able to, but you're still going to be controlled, if that makes sense. Yeah, because it doesn't dis... You can't dispel Black Hole because it's an AoE, but you should still be able to hit the button because I know it gets rid of things lasso. But this, this basically makes Mickey immortal. The only way they've been able to kill him is in Black Hole. And uh, actually, he might not be able to put it in a global silence on top of the Black Hole. Yeah, that's like that's the kill potential, right? Yeah. He does have a Satanic coming out, though, which at least soon, right? That's what he's that's what he's going to be building. And I think once he has the buyback for it, like he wants buyback and Satanic. And those two items are going to make him very difficult to deal with. 
Yeah, it's, it's as, as if he wasn't even <laughs> difficult <laughs> enough to deal with. So 25 talent. So we talked about Quakefoot's level tied talent. Just a nice application. You can see all the Storm Spirit remnants. It's always pretty damn fun. Are there any other big 25s that we're looking out for? Uh, I mean, let's see. So the only, I mean, Meepo, I guess. I mean, he's going to be very close. I imagine you go the health, but in this game, is it even going to be that much more important giving like it seems like they just chew through his health pool anyway yeah it's it's not an insane talent to get and how is our, our job doing well one thing i do actually really want to point out is you know we talked about how meepo's usually ahead in levels and because they've been able to kill him so much had this experience to the alliance side and that's why their two cores are 25 before the side of vp so mickey bottles up a dd rune here so this is this is looking real good Roshan potentially going to respawn in 30 seconds. Wow, Mickey is not afraid of ever anything. They, they, have the they, back back. they have the silence. He is probably going to get down. Yes. Can't battle transit. There yeah, you go. They, they Problem solved. And they're also about boxing. They go in into tomorrow and because there's four here on top. No one, he's not going to be able to live through this. The space, the obvious attack is on top of three of them. Insane, he seems to be the one tanking this, but he has that bonus armor. And now Ramses, they have the vision point. This Lincoln Spirit's not going to allow him to save it. And a great fight for the side of Alliance. They did force two buybacks, but a massive kill. And that's just going to lead into Roche. That was an instant Roche respawn. Absolutely instant. He pops a DD and he's just going to get a free Roche now. The, the, like, Alliance's team... They do so much damage just from the support. CM did 10,000 damage from Freezing Field in that fight. She just blinks BKB and there's no way to deal with it. By the way, something I didn't talk about is the approach as an Agon Inceptor. That's on, that's on Storm for sure. Yeah, the AOE control is just going to be absolutely insane. And now that he has it, you can see the Storm shoot up in net worth of the free like 6,000 gold at that item cost. It's I mean, do you buy back? Like, I feel like you can't afford to just lose your base right now. But they like, don't you ha have their ultimate. They don't have yeah. hold. They don't have global silence. Alliance like, may have uh... <laughs> I don't know how you can win this fight either. I think Alliance right now, they're going to just close out the game. They're playing it very controlled, just going for the same racks. But do you think they go for tier 4? I think they just want top. Oh, unless they get a great grab on Juggernaut. Buy back here from the Meepo. Do they have quite enough Ramses? He's getting very low. The Heaty Walkie is going to be able to spin out for safety. Roger, he does have another black hole, though, after how much he fakes. But they have the Aegis as well as the Ultima over here. Oh, Mika, he pops his Ultima. He's surviving through it. They lose the mark once again. The control from the Storm. That was a buyback from Meepo. And now they no longer have no one for 121 seconds. And they're just going to look towards the tier boards. They didn't lose Aegis. They haven't used Cheese. They did use the Satanic here on Mika, but they don't really mind. The AoE Vortex is just so good with Alliance's draft, right? Like, you just pull everyone into this freezing field and there's no way to stop it. Now, okay, just looking at net worth really quick, suddenly this game went from being like 10, almost 10,000 in favor from Virtus Pro to almost 30,000 in favor of Alliance in less than 10 minutes. Yes, the Panda, he's in trouble. The Vortex is on top of both of The bar attack, they do have a black hole, but it connects on absolutely no one from the side of Alliance. And with that wish black hole, they just call GG. Alliance has 2 0 BP here in the first matching group. <laughs> oh my goodness, Alliance, man. These guys are insane. What an what a amazing draft. Dude. This is so fun to watch. Alliance just playing these fights so patiently. Every time it looks like Virtus Pro gets a good engagement in these fights, they just completely turn it 